Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are going to go over a border design utilizing the mystical arc ruler as well as possibly any other arc rulers that you might have in your collection. So come on over, see how I've pre-marked it, and then we'll get started with the quilting. Now to organize your setup what we're going to look at here is our border. We actually have a six inch border with two cornerstones and I will usually go ahead and create two cornerstones even if it's on just tone on tone fabric just so that I don't have to deal with the math for the center for this particular border treatment. It works out great and there's just not a lot of, of labor involved when you're doing it this way. So I have divided my border in half with the chalk mark and then I've also located the center of the border and put another chalk mark down the length. Now remember, before we would have loaded this quilt, you would have also have located the center on both sides and marked those with chalk before you loaded the machine. Okay, now here is the center of our border. I'm going to take my arc, slide it up. I've already locked my stitches here. Make sure I center that perfect. My very first arc on my way across from right to left is going to be at the three inch mark. Now again, depending on whether or not you have a small arc, a medium arc, or a different arc altogether, that's where you're going to start. I always just put a piece of tape um, across the mark that I'm going to use. Again, in my case it's going to be three inches. In your case it could be whatever it is. I'm going to lock this. I've lined up my center mark right here. Come around. And because I'm going to do a decorative form of border design, I'm going to go ahead and thicken my line by going over it three times, both sides. Come down, up, down, stop there, slide my ruler. And now I'm going to come up and repeat the same thing. I'm going to make sure to line this up all the way over to the left side of the quilt. Up, down, up. Now I'm going to come down the other side, down, up, down. Now before I actually move this, I'm going to go ahead and make a registration line right here in the center of that arc, just like I do here. So I have a mark that was automatically in the center, I just put a chalk mark right up in the tip of the arc. So now I'm going to slide my ruler and we're going to continue all the way over to the side repeating this process until we get to the end. Our next step is we're going to make straight lines right in the center of each of the arcs as well as between the arcs right into the cleavage. So I'm going to slide my ruler over and I'm actually going to square it. I line that up right with the tip and then I use one of the registration marks and of course we're using a mystical designer right now. Come down, up, slide over. Again, square that, make sure that it's right there, and I'm going to do this all the way into the center.
I now have all of my sections all marked off and so now I'm going to bring back the ruler and on the way back towards the center I'm actually going to lower my line to the one inch mark, do an arc and then when I get over here travel the ditch a little bit I'm going to slide up to an inch and a half, do another arc and slide the ditch slide the ruler to two inches and come up. So I'll have three sewn marks to separate the arc itself so that I can create positive and negative space. So there we are at one. Travel my ditch a little bit, and then I'm going to slide right up in there, and then I'm going to go to one and a half inch on the mark here, come back over, and again, I always want to make sure that that center line stays centered right on that registration mark that I made. One, two, now I'm making these thick lines so it'll pop the design a little bit in the border, but also it's a nice way to travel within the lines when we actually start doing our fill. So now I'm going to take it up to two. I'm going to make sure to reline that back up, bring it back, one, two, Now I'm going to move the ruler and I'm going to repeat the same process all the way over towards the center. So there's my one right up there. If you need to, by the way, you may want to go ahead and use some of the red tape that we've used on the back of this ruler for each line on your way back across. That way it's just a little trigger on where you need to go so you don't make an oops and have to rip out. Okay, so now this is our center one. We've worked our way back and now we're going to work our way all the way over to the right and then we're going to come back putting our three miniature arcs inside there.
Okay, now we have come all the way back to the center. And now what we're going to do is to go in and fill in every other space with whatever form of design we think will look nice. In this case, I think I'm going to go ahead and throw one of my lotus feathers in the bottom. And then up here, I'm just going to do um, some pebbles just to separate the middle one. I have completed all the fill work in the bottom arcs and now this is my middle one. I'm going to bring my ruler back over. I've locked my stitches right there. I'm going to line up that center and I'm going to mirror it towards what we have on the bottom. I'm going to lock that, make sure that line is lined up and then very simply I'm going to come down, thicken that line. Remember to keep it a little thicker. Pause, come back here, come around, touch, come around, and up, right into that corner, lock my stitches, slide my ruler, again, make sure that that's locked, make sure that your center line is lined up with the line that goes through that we made earlier. And then repeat that process all the way over to the end. As you can see now, we have mirrored both sides to each other. Here is our center registration line again. And so my next step for this particular border design is I'm going to measure in three quarters of an inch in towards the inside of the diamond. And where I'm measuring from, of course, is that line that cuts the arc in half. So from here in on the center line, three quarter inches, 
and of course from the other side, the center line there in three quarters of an inch. Put a little line there, move down and continue those marks all the way across. Boom. Boom. They're not going to be exact, obviously. And the reason I say they're not going to be exact, these line up really well. The human eye is automatically going to self-correct if it's off a little bit or it shifted from mirror image to mirror image. So that three-quarter inch I want to keep consistent from here to here. If it's a little off, just go with it. Trust me on this. It will still look perfect once it's completed. What I've done next, after putting our three-quarter inch line in from the tip of the arcs on both sides all the way across, is now I use the arc ruler and I go ahead and I chalk a line from where that three-quarter hit all the way down right into the tip of that cleavage. So I came over here, I went ahead and drew a registration line, tipped my ruler, lined that up, did another line, turned the ruler, did the same thing on the opposite side, came down, and then turned the ruler and did the same thing from the tip all the way down into that tip of the cleavage. And I've done that now in all of the diamond shapes all the way in and actually they're curved diamond shapes. Now I just go ahead and pre-mark it and then I go ahead and use my ruler and I quilt that and I'm going to go ahead when I'm done here and fill this in with micro work to get this lovely high-end custom arced mirrored border. So let me bring the machine over and we'll get that section quilted. I have my machine locked in position. I'm going to slide my ruler over and again, I'm checking to make sure that it's a quarter inch away from the actual mark that I've made because we obviously have a quarter inch foot. I'm going to start here. I'm going to come up, go right over, and then I want to thicken that line a little bit, so I'm going to come down, down. Now I can travel any direction that I choose to to continue. I'm going to go ahead and slide right over here line that one up and now I'm gonna slide up and repeat that other side of the arc back up Slide that up and now we can see that this is going to create a wonderful positive and negative once it's mirrored with the diamonds on both sides. It's going to look fantastic. And I can then make some decisions whether or not I choose to come in here, maybe do another one inside here as far as a curved diamond and then maybe fill that in completely with pebbles so we have that wonderful positive negative or as we like to call it relief quilting. So I'm going to continue across and complete this all the way across. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about this cornerstone to finish this up. What I've done so far is I've measured and located the center and put a registration mark here in the center of each of the straight lines. And then very simply, I took a straight ruler and I made an X through the block. So those are the only registration lines that I'm going to need for this 
cornerstone treatment and then we're actually going to utilize the medium arc. Now if you have a bigger arc than the arcs that you used um, for your actual border treatment then I would use a bigger one. This is a medium. We actually use the small for the border treatments and then what I'm going to do is to take this in and meet it right here to here to get a nice arc in this cornerstone with some filler. Let's sew that. Okay, we have our thread locked. I'm going to bring my ruler over. I've got it locked right in that spot, that quarter spot. Now I do. Slide that over, make sure that that lines up there. And I'm going to come around, back sew, because I want a nice thick line to pop it. Go all the way into that quarter. Come around there. Now I can do two things. I can go ahead, flip my ruler this way, or I could do an inside portion. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put another arc right in there at about an inch and a half. So I'll take that down to an inch and a half. When I say inch and a half, it meets right here behind that foot, right at an inch and a half. Down, stop, arc over, come back arc over, come around to the top, move the ruler behind, get that back in that corner here. So that's all the way locked in. That's over here. I check over here to make sure that I'm about a quarter inch away from my mark because that's where I'm going to end up. And then very simply, come around. Hit that mark pretty close to dead on. And I remind myself, perfection's overrated. Slide it a little bit. Now, I'm away a little bit here because I have a distorted size block here. So I'm going to go ahead, bring that around to the center, back, back so. And now I can go ahead and adjust that a little bit. That's the nice thing about these arcs. You can actually kind of shift them a little and adjust. Again, there are so, so many times when in quilting we have to make up for, um, oh, let's see, challenging piecing. How's that? That's a nice way to say it. And sometimes in doing that, you want a ruler that's gonna shift so that you can take something imperfect and make it perfect, or at least perfect to the eye. So now I've come all the way around with the main one, and now I'm just gonna work my way back, slide down, take myself up here to an inch and a half, go back up a little ways, boom, boom, line that up, come down, around, back, I want a thick line. I'm going to put micro work in there. Probably do some micro swirls. Come down. Lock those slitches. St slitches? Stitches? Sorry about that. Slide that in. Come down. Around. Back. Forth. Slide. Stop. Turn my ruler. Bring that around from the back. I'm gonna go ahead and position it a little bit here. Try not to get my shoulder in the way of the camera. Come around, I've got that as lined up as I'm gonna get it. Over, around, and there. Get my ruler out of the way. And now I'm gonna come in there and do some micro work. Well, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this ARC tutorial as much as I've enjoyed doing it. Have a wonderful day, take care of each other, and we will see you down the road.